how to set boundaries as a family traveling. Hi, I'm Lauren Selby. And I'm Jamie Selby. And we've got three beautiful kids, Jackson, Alara and Tobias. And we're currently traveling the world. We're trying to show you how to live the ultimate life by living life the way that you want to. What do we mean by boundaries? Now, I like to think of boundaries like in the sense of cricket. I don't know whether you've ever played cricket or watched cricket, but in cricket, you've got in the center of the pitch, you've got where they play. You've got the, the stumps either side and then round the pitch, if you want to call it, you've got this, normally it's like a, a piece of rope that sets the boundary. So you've got this boundary, which is basically there to protect the spectators because when they hit that cricket ball, they can hit it very, very hard and the cricket ball is very, very hard as well. So you don't want to get a hit by a cricket ball. But the point is, is that there is a boundary that sets the limits for protecting the spectators. That's what I like to think of it like as, as a dad. The metaphor is we're, we're setting these boundaries to protect our kids, to protect our family, to protect our time. So the boundaries could be uh, work. So during these times, you know, daddy's not available, I'm working. You know, without boundaries, it, things get very, very difficult. I want to give you an example. Now we're on the beach, we're recording this video for you guys watching, and we've had to set boundaries because the kids kept coming into the video, kept interrupting us. We weren't able to record any content for you at all because it just consisted of the kids running in front of the camera. So we had to set some boundaries. So we said, right, okay, we're going to film over here. Um, you guys go and play over there and let's set some boundaries. But it isn't always that easy because if you're living in a house you know and you're working from home or if you're working from an office if you're working from an office it's easy to set boundaries for work because you know you go to work at nine o'clock you come back at five o'clock so that's dead easy you've got the boundary so when you come back home you shouldn't be bringing your work home with you but I know as a dad I kept bringing work home with me because you know I wanted to go after that promotion I wanted to impress my boss I wanted to be the best do you know what I mean? I wanted to do well at work. You know, I didn't want to just turn up to work. But then what I realized was by trying to be the best, I was, my work was spilling over into my home life. I was then not being present as a dad. I was then not being present as a husband. I was not being present as a friend. I was just vacant. I was just, I wasn't there. Like I was still at work, you know, even, even if I was sat in the living room watching telly with my kids or playing a game with them, I wasn't there because my head was still at work. So I wasn't setting healthy boundaries in my mind you know, setting healthy boundaries in my work because, you know, nine to five, I'd go to work. Or actually, it might be nine to six, um, you know, depending on traffic. It might even be nine to seven or actually eight till seven at some times because of traffic. I'd get home from work and I would just be absolutely knackered. I'd just be spent, but I'm still thinking about work. I'm still thinking about all the things that I've got to do the next day, you know, because I, it wouldn't be until Friday that I'd kind of let go of those things and let my hair down a little bit and start to be fun dad, as I like to call it. So fun dad is the dad that comes home, wants to play with the kids, you know, wants to kiss his wife, wants to spend time with his family, you know, is 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 engaged with his family. That's the fun dad. But I, I never was fun dad. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because I was constantly having that work in my mind. Basically, because I wasn't being fun dad anymore, I was losing who I was. I was losing my identity. I was starting to ask a lot of questions. You know, who am I? You know, who, is this the dad that I want to be? Is this the person that I want to show up as? The person that's just distracted all the time? You know, I'm, I'm in my phone. I'm looking in my phone, like trying to catch up with emails so that when I get to work, I can be more efficient at work. You know, because I felt like I wasn't being completely present at work because I was still thinking that, oh, I should have been present at home. When I was at home, I should have been present with my kids or I should have been present, or I shouldn't have shouted at the kids or I shouldn't have shouted at the wife or I shouldn't have done this. Or, you know, I was constantly kind of questioning myself, which was ultimately creating this, you know, loss of identity for myself. Like, I mean, who, who, who am I? Like, you know, is this, is this really the person that I've become? This shouty pants dad, not fun dad shouty pants dad and fun dad like, i didn't want to be shouty pants dad anymore more i wanted to be fun dad and that's what made me start to search ultimately for answers i was like you know surely there's better ways of, of dealing with this and one of the things that came up was setting boundaries now i thought boundaries were like physical boundaries but in cricket those boundaries are not just physical boundaries like i'm using that as a metaphor for also like mental boundaries we have to have that separation between ourselves who we are uh, we have to have those boundaries and i started reading books um not necessarily about boundaries but about mindset started to read um so listen to jim quick podcast listening to jason greystone podcast uh, listen to sebastian bates podcast uh, reading books um about mindset reading books about marketing you know how can i make my business more efficient so i don't have to 
be at work anymore. I started reading Michael Gerber, The E-Myth, which helped me uh, kind of take myself outside of the business. And all these things um, were working, but they were taking me more further and further away from my family because I was again being more shouty pants dad because I was like, look, don't you understand? Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to make this work for us. I'm trying to, to be this better dad. I'm trying to be this better person for you. Can't you see it? As I'm trying to, shouting at my wife, explaining to her why I'm working more and more hours. Um, you know, can't you see that I'm doing this for us? You know, I look back now and I'm, I'm like laughing really because I didn't realize how bad it had got, you know, until you, you, you'd look back like, even now doing this video now how bad things had really got you know how shouty pants dad had become like the full-time person in my head because fun dad had gone out the window because shouty pants dad was taking over because he wanted to be a better person he wanted to go on this journey and again I'm, I'm going to say this you've seen this in a lot of my videos but it but it wasn't until I had coaching when I started to see the difference and change in me because actually shouty pants dad was just a mindset in, in me because I felt like I was like how did my family not understand how do you not understand that I'm trying to do this for you how do you not understand I'm trying to do this for you like how do you not understand but actually they didn't understand because all they could see was the fact that I was working from home and I was ignoring them so although I had like a physical boundaries in my office was at the bottom of the garden although I had physical boundaries in the sense of the time that I was supposed to be working I didn't have any boundaries for actually what was important to me which was spending time with my kids you know being fun dad that that's the dad I want to be I don't want to be shouty pants dad I mean do you want to be shouty pants dad <laughs> or do you want to be fun dad Jamie's definitions for things are slightly different to mine so what he calls boundaries I call values and um, I would talk about you know what are your key values as a person and as long as you're being true to those values then you live a more happy and more respectful life but Jamie's idea of boundaries are uh, like a mental blockage in his mind of what he won't go outside. But I don't know if that means that he can open those boundaries. For me, I won't go against my values, so I won't do something that's disrespectful or dishonest. And if I do, then I have to go and correct myself and just like take some time out. We try to be helpful and kind, but actually sometimes we're not. We're not kind. We're not kind all the time. So we have to go and take ourselves off and, you know, maybe apologise for something we did that wasn't kind and then just say, I'm really sorry. I need to go and check in with myself. For whatever reason it was that we decided we, we couldn't be kind that day or whatever it is that we did, maybe it's me saying something mean to the kids or some of the kids saying something mean to me. We then apologise and it's important then for me to go and take time and say, you know, I broke one of my boundaries or my values and I wasn't kind to Toby or Toby wasn't kind to me. We had a misunderstanding. But what do we do to fix it? Well, you know, we put that boundary back up saying, you know, it's one of our values, we have to be kind and helpful and respectful or whatever your own boundaries are or values are. If you check in with yourself and you take that time out, you know, the reason we give our kids a time out is so that they can get the mental headspace because it's not a punishment. There's no punishment in life to kind of go, you were really unhelpful or you were really disrespectful. Go and sit over there and sit in the corner on your own. It's about saying, go and take five, let yourself calm down, do your dragon breaths, or I, as a, a person and a coach, I'll teach breathing and letting it go. But the kids, we do dragon breaths, so watch this. Lara, come here. <laughs> quick, quick, quick. Quick, I need your help. Will you help mummy? Nope. We even from like one, Alara started doing the dragon breath. So all we're trying to do there is take the oxygen in to our brains and then breathe out. And all, all that's doing is letting us calm down. And then it accesses the logical part of the brain. Because when we're not calm, we're in reptile mode and we can't access that logical part that tells us why we're doing something unkind or not safe or whatever it is. Like the key to breaking boundaries or the key to upsetting your values or like going against the rules if you like is to then take time out to check in with yourself is that you know was it kind helpful or respectful no it wasn't well why wasn't it what was I thinking at that moment in time that made me act like that or you know why did I shout at the kids today okay there's probably a number of reasons so let's think about letting it go so breathing in letting it go saying sorry and then moving on because if we dwell on the problem it's going to still be a problem like I could spend the whole day at the beach being angry and upset because 
I'm doing something I don't want to do or I could kind of go okay I have my little tantrum go and take myself off do my breathing let it go and then try enjoying it I continued on my coaching journey and it just started to unlock things and started to help me see things from a different perspective. But on the coaching journey, you like friends, family, you know, they don't understand it. They don't get it. Like they don't coach like a, a life coach. Like, why have you got a life coach, Jamie? That would be what, what my uh, mum would typically say. You know, or my friends would be like, like, why do you need life coach, Jamie? Like you've got everything. But what they didn't understand was like what's going off inside here. Yes, I, I may on the outside look like I've got this perfect life but actually on the inside um and inside here it, it was all broken because i wasn't being the dad i wasn't being fun dad i was being shouty pants dad but they didn't see that because i was only shouty pants dad like behind closed doors because i felt like i was safe have you ever felt like that so yeah i, de I decided i didn't want to be shouty pants dad anymore and that was basically for me that was a big shift in mindset it wasn't until we went on this journey that I actually realised how bad a shouty pants dad I'd become because the ultimate life for us is is one travelling. It's experiencing new cultures. It's going to different places. It's experiencing new things. It is homeschooling. You know, it's travelling with my family. It's being with my family and actually being with my family, actually being present with my family. You know, it's not about work and, and, and working to, to pay the bills. You know, I'm working to continue to travel like this. Like I'm working to continue to live a life like this. I'm continuing to work to live an inspirational life, not to pay bills for a house that I didn't like, to live in a village that I didn't like. You know, it, it didn't have anything for me. It didn't have anything for my family. Yes, the schools were good. Yes, my friends were amazing, but ultimately it wasn't the life that I wanted to live. You know, have you ever felt like that, that you, you're, you feel like trapped, like you're, you're living a life that's not yours. Like, you know, you want to escape from it, but you can't, or you feel like you can't. And that's kind of how I felt. I felt like I was just shadow of a person. I'd, I'd become shouty pants dad and I didn't want to be that anymore. So we'd finally embarked on our journey. We sold our house, sold everything, because without that, if we hadn't done that, I don't think we'd have ever done this because, you know, that was our safety net. Like that was our, you know, if fear was keeping us trapped, you know, because we were scared of everything outside that boundary, our boundary, fence for the cricket our boundary fence was Kiwa. now Kiwa was a small place but it was like this is safe like this is safe this is where our family are this is where our friends are this is where our school is this is where the swimming pool is like you know everything there is safe and we just kind of set this safe boundary but ultimately it wasn't making us happy so it wasn't until we sold that house and got detached from it you know taken away from it all of a sudden we felt like we'd leveled up and it wasn't leveled up in the sense of like Kiwa's a bad place because it's not Kiwa's an amazing amazing village it just wasn't for us that lifestyle that we were living wasn't for us because we were just working to pay bills, to pay for childcare, to pay for all those things. Like most of you watching this video, you know, you're, you're going to work to pay bills. Now I'm going to work to pay, yes, I'm still going to work to pay bills, but I'm going to pay bills for, you know, petrol or diesel to get me to my location. I'm paying for bills for hotels or um, accommodation in really amazing places, basically in holiday destinations. That's what I'm doing. You know, do you want to live the ultimate life or do you want to just live a normal life? There's nothing wrong with the normal life. I want to just kind of put that in there. But for us, it didn't work like that so I don't know I mean what what do you want what do you want to do um you know do you set self healthy boundaries and like whilst we're traveling you know our healthy boundaries are in the mind it's like right okay Lauren you're working now so she'll go and do um a couple of hours in a co-working space so we're going to find a co-working space I'll take the kids to the beach or I'll take the kids to a park or depending on obviously the weather um if the weather's really bad we we set up the iPad we sit and watch some films or I do some homework with Toby you know they're the things that work for us but for us the boundaries weren't like physical time boundaries because it was like again we kind of felt like we were slipping back to that nine to five mentality well no we don't have to do that because actually we could do a couple of hours at night we could do a couple of hours here a couple of hours there but and we we kind of found that actually having those healthy boundaries in our mind but not healthy boundaries on like our physical boundaries actually helped us evolve because now all of a sudden we don't feel restricted you know we can go anywhere we can do anything we can be the parents that we want to be we can actually go after the life that we want to live because we're not trying to live that nine to five life we're not trying to work 40 hours a week what we're saying is we're only going to work the hours that we need to to pay the bills so we can continue to live this life and yes you might be saying jamie you're really fortunate because you know you you can do an online job anybody can do an online job 
anybody. You know, you could become a virtual assistant, you could do, and a virtual assistant basically is somebody that helps somebody virtually with administration. Anybody can do that. I'm not trying to disrespect VAs now, um, because they're not, because you have highly skilled VAs that will get paid an exceptional amount of money and they deserve that. And then you have lower paid uh, VAs that get paid less money and they're just good at data entry. So they'll just enter data or they'll be entering numbers in a spreadsheet. So if you can enter numbers into a spreadsheet, you can become a virtual assistant. And that's not me trying to downgrade your, your skill set. What I'm trying to say is that it is possible. You just have to find a way. You could go online, look at remote jobs, and that will really help you as well. But anyway, please do check out our other videos. Um, I've got another video on the top three mistakes to make uh, that, that you could make whilst traveling with kids or the top three mistakes to avoid whilst traveling with kids in a van. I hope you do like that video. Uh, do like and subscribe. Um, I love, I love, 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 love uh, comments and questions. So please do ask any questions in the comment section below. I'd love to get to know more about you and answer any questions that you've got. Have an amazing day. Join us on our adventure. As we inspire you to live your ultimate life. Please like and subscribe. kind of how I felt. I felt like I was just, I don't know, just this shadow of a person, a shadow of a person, shadow of a person.